Hello everyone and welcome to Split Second. Don't forget, next week we will be announcing the winners of our 10k subscribers giveaway. If you want to participate, make sure to pledge as a patron until the end of the month. Now let's jump into this week's pod. Leito brought Yuriko Midrange, a collab list you can find in the CDH database. Helder brewed the Krenko Mob Boss combo deck. David is piloting Timur Polytyrant by Ifon and the Tangelo, and Bao went back on his Galazeth Taxi combo build. Late is going first and he mulligan down to 6, finding a Polluted Delta, Watery Grave and Mana Crypt for ramp, with an early Ornithopter to be in Jutsuit, as well as Mist Blade Shinobi for extra triggers with Yuriko. Null Rod can be key versus Galazeth and Tyrant Lines and he sent to the bottom Sunken Ruins. Helder mulligan once and kept a Mountain, Ancient Tomb and a Soul Ring enabling him to cast Phyrexian Altar and get some colored mana going on with his Gobos. Mass Hysteria to enable his Cranko and some other lines, Cheering Fanatic allows for an early Cranko and Imperial Recruiter can find some combo pieces. David also mulliganed once and found quite the brown hand. Bloodstained Mire and Tropical Island for lands with a Lotus Petal, Simic Signet, Talisman of Creativity and Grim Monolith for ramp, Isochron Scepter at hand in case he finds Dramatic Reversal, lacking on Interaction but he would rather not go down to 6. Finally, Ball kept the trend of Mulligan once and found an island and a Misty Rainforest for Lance. Despite being fourth, his lack of early payoffs reflects his intention on keeping that Remora for some time, with a Mystical Tutor and Spell Seeker to maybe get the other pieces to go along Brain Freeze. Final Fortune might be the time walk he needs once he puts together all the pieces of the puzzle. Ready for this match? Late opens things up with a Polluted Delta, cracking it for an Underground Sea. He then casts an Ornithopter and follows it with a Mana Crypt. He still casts a Mistblade Shinobi before ending his juicy turn 1. Elder plays an Ancient Tomb, followed by a Soul Ring and then casts a Phyrexian Altar before passing. David plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it right away for a Volcanic Island, before Latent taps with Agent Mana. Baal plays a Mystery in Forest and cracks it for a Volcanic Island. He casts Mystic Remora and passes. Leito manages to win his crit roll. He plays an untapped Watery Grave, paying 2 life and goes into combat. He attacks Elder with Shinobi and Baal with a Thopter which he ninjutsus for a Yuriko, triggering twice. He reveals a Swan Song and then a Diabolic Intent. He then casts a Null Rot, triggering Remora. And since Galazeth is not like Urza, where the mana ability comes from the creature, Bal responds to it with a Force of Negation, pitching a Spell Seeker. Late then casts his Ornithopter and passes. Heller plays a Mountain and casts Imperial Recruiter, triggering any tutors for a Ragavan. He sacrifices the Recruiter to the altar and casts Ragavan before passing. David plays a Tropical Island and casts Rograk. He's full of artifacts in hand and doesn't feel like feeding the fish, nor staying a lot behind, so he casts a Talisman of Creativity, triggering Remora and hoping Baal eventually stops paying for it. However, as he passes, Baal does pay for Remora, for another turn cycle. He plays a Bloodstained Mire and cracks it for a Mountain, with which he casts a Codex Shredder, threatening late tutors to the top as he passes. Late gets to win his crit roll again and goes into combat, sending Yuriko at Pal and Shinobi at Elder, who after some pondering decides not to block even if it means Ragavan will be bounced. Yuriko triggers and he reveals a Gitaxin probe and a Limdul's Vault. The monkey is indeed bounced and he then plays a Clearwater Pathway and casts a Diabolic Intent, sacrificing the Thopter, triggering Remora and unable to pay. He tutors for a Thassa's Oracle as he recently drew a Tainted Pact. Helder gets to his turn and plays a Mountain, enabling him to cast his commander, Krenko Mob Boss. He passes after that and David plays a Scalding Tarn, that he cracks for a Taiga. He then casts a Grim Monolith, triggering the Remora. He is setting up to win as he found a Polymorph effect, and still has Isochrome Scepter at hand, so one way or another he's hoping to go infinite. After some math, he casts Thrasios and passes. Bal decides not to activate the Shredder to have it ready for instant speed tutors. He still pays for Remora, hoping to find some fast mana for his Galazeth. He plays an island and passes. Late finally loses his crit roll. He starts things with a Submerge, targeting Krenko. Remora triggers and then Elder actually lets Krenko stay on top of his library. Late then attacks one creature at each undefended player, slowly amassing them combat damage points at Baal. Almost there. Yuriko triggers and Late responds to it with a Limdol's Vault. Baal actually misses his Remora trigger and Late pays 3 life total to dig into another win con. Now still with Yuriko's triggers on the stack, the table discusses what could be the best time to activate the Shredder. Would Late want the first, second or third card? And to add to the brainstorming, Late reminds the table that he has a Gitaxin probe, so he could even go as deep as the fourth card in the pile. Eventually, Ball passes priority on the first trigger, revealing a snuff out. 
brainstorming on the stack again, and each person is thinking on what the other person could think to then do differently. However, that could also be taken into account, and eventually Bal could be doing what Late had planned all along. Bal does activate the Shredder now, and hits a Force of Negation. However, the last Eurekus trigger reveals a Doomsday, so Late is now with two win cards in hand, Thoracle and Doomsday. Late then casts a Gitaxin Probe targeting Bal. Remora triggers and Late gets to see Bal's 9 cards in hand. He wants to know how much interaction Bal could have to stop him, and is quite safe at the moment. He plays a Mana Confluence and passes. Heller plays a Great Furnace, which is in for Goblin Welder shenanigans. He casts Krenko Mob Boss and follows that with a dashed Ragavan that is aimed straight at late. It connects and finds the fifth card from his Limdol's Vault, a Skimming Symmetry. Heller gets a treasure and ponders quite a bit on the tutor, eventually casting it, and targeting late since he is the player most ahead. It would force Bal to target him with a Shredder over his own tutor. The Remora triggers and then Elder finds a Thornbite Staff in order to win next turn and late finds a dismember, as Bal will be able to get a blocker next turn, and it is also nothing that he would regret losing, taking into account Bal's winds of rebuke. Ragavan is returned to Helder's hand, and we're back at the vid. He decides to go for it, firing a reality scramble on his Rograk. Remora triggers, and Bal draws. He passes priority, since late still has answers, and he responds with a snuff out on Rograk, triggering Remora again. Without any valid target, Reality Scramble fizzles, and then, with the floating mana from the monolith, the vid casts a Simic Signet, prompting some complaints from late. The grumble resolves, and on the vid's end step, Bal casts a Mystical Tutor for a Force of Will. Bal finally lets the fish go, draws the foe, and plays an Inventor's Fair. He casts his Sol Ring and then casts his commander, Galazeth Prismari. It resolves, giving him a treasure. He then casts a Tormod Script and with the 10 cards in hand fires his Winds of Rebuke on Eureko, hoping to deal with the two tutors to the top at once. Late does respond with his Swan Song, for which Bal responds with the tutored Force of Will, pitching an intuition. Eureko is bounced and everyone kneels two cards. Bal passes and Late gets slapped by the Crypt once again. This whole tutor to the top thingy eventually led to his main plan, casting Thassa's Oracle. It actually resolves, and he responds to the trigger with a Tainted Pact. In response, David fires a Pact of Negation. However, late top decked quite well, a Fluster Storm. David is two mana short from paying for it, so Bal responds with a Muddle the Mixture on the Tainted Pact, hopefully saving the table. Late resolves the Thoracle's trigger and sadly passes. Helder plays an Urza Saga and is one red mana short from doing stuff, so he casts his Shearing Fanatic and follows it with a Ragavan, normal cast, as everyone has blockers. He then passes and Suspense follows, to see if the vid has the nut draw to go off now. With 4 cards in hand, he has no lands to retrace Reality Scramble though, so he sadly passes. Bal gains one from the fair, draws, and sees an opening as well. He casts a Mox Diamond, pitching the top deck island. He then casts a Weir of Invention for 2 finding an Isochron Scepter. It enters and he imprints Dramatic Reversal. He then tries to activate it, but as Priority passes through the Shattering Red deck, David eventually casts a Chain of Vapor onto the Scepter, foiling Bal's attempts at winning as well. Bal floats blue with the Mox Diamond in response, the Scepter is bounced and the Dramatic Reversal resolves, and tapping all his non-land permanents. He then casts a Trinosphere and passes. Late gets to win his crit roll, draws, and plays his Kaldintarn, not cracking it, so at least the two useless cards he put on the bottom with the Thoracle stay there. He then attacks the Vid with his two creatures, and Shinobi is blocked by Thrasius, so he Ninjutsu's Thassa's Oracle back to his hand. Yuriku triggers, and he reveals a Spectral Sailor. On his end step, Heller activates Krenko, creating two goblins. It's now Heller's turn, and his Urza Sagas gains another chapter ability. He casts Goblin Sharpshooter, and when Haste seems the last piece of the puzzle, he casts Mass Hysteria, paying 3. It resolves, and now he's doing some math on how he could win from here. He activates Sharpshooter, pinging Galazeth for 1. He then sacrifices Ragavan for red to the altar, triggering the Sharpshooter to be untapped. He then activates Krenko to create 5 Goblin tokens. He activates Sharpshooter again, pinging Galazeth for 1, and then sacrifices a token for red, untapping the Sharpshooter. With his 4 mana, he now casts Breath of Fury on his cheering fanatic. In response, David activates Thrasius, scrying to the bottom and revealing a Narset's reversal. Bal is one mana short from activating Codex Shredder to get his foe to hand, so he simply taps Thrinosphere for blue, so Late can now try to interact. 
He cracks his scalding tarn for an island and flashes in his spectral sailor, which he activates, trying to hit foe or pact. But the free spell he draws is no good. This way, Helder is capable of killing the sailor with a sharpshooter and proceeds to attack him with the Shearing Fanatic, enchanted with Breath of Fury. When he deals damage, he sacrifices it and attaches to a goblin token, and tapping all his creatures, Krenko included, which can output more and more goblins, and kill everyone through infinite combat steps and infinite goblins. GG. Thank you for joining us for today's match, everyone! Everyone attempted to win but was eventually stopped, and the mono red deck came on top. Helder is now on a 3 match winning streak. We'd like to start the credits by thanking our current patrons, and especially Izanagi, Stefan, DJ Rap, Mike Purr, Ajimo, Uncrustable, Drunken Housecat, V, RJ, Heated Shield, Pina, and Kiju Sex, our stack breakers. If you want to support us, you can do so by liking this video, subscribing, or by becoming a patron yourself. If you want to go through other Commander adventures, click one of the videos on the right. If you want to talk with us about our games or other EDH-related matters, join us on Discord. Join us again next week for a new set of commanders and more decisive plays. See you all then!